uh, welcome to Clash Culture with me, Kensane. Uh, I'm here with uh, Shwaib Walters today, and uh, we thought we could just take a brief uh, look back into his career, and then uh, also we're going to have some uh, an interesting chat about uh, his uh, goalkeeping academy that he has started. So yeah, before we go any further, can you please uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share this video. So yeah, man, uh, Shwaib, welcome to Clash Culture. How are you doing, brother? I'm well, man. Uh, Kensane, how are you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm good, man. Uh, Shreve, we, have, we haven't seen you in a, in a while, man, since you uh, played for Ajax Cape Town. And uh, before that, you were at Cape Town City. And uh, we used to see you a lot because you guys made uh, a lot of noise. Uh, so it's great to see you after such a while, man. Yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's been a tough time, you know, after, after obviously retiring. Um, yeah. I think, I think nobody, nobody really prepares you for, for retirement. Um, yeah. I think I think a lot of athletes, and not only even in, in in football, I think just a lot a lot of professional athletes, um, they don't really prepare you for retirement. They don't really guide you through it, you know. So it's a it's a kind of a stage where you have to deal on it, uh, deal with it on your own. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I did some research on it, and there's quite a few athletes that that actually go into depression, um, yeah. you know, after retiring um, because mm -hmm. you don't know what to do anymore. You 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 obviously don't know you know you you it just it just hits you that you know you're not going to be on the training ground anymore and mm. um yeah you, you you struggle so yeah. i think that is one thing that that um i think we could we could also uh, look at um maybe a few years before you before you retire and stuff like that look already at uh, preparing players or preparing athletes um and and asking them you know what and and get that whole transition a little bit more swift uh, swiftly, you know, and it doesn't yeah. have to have a lot of bump, uh, hurdles and bumps. Yeah, so uh, you think it would help uh, maybe for programs uh, for players, maybe who um, I don't know, uh, maybe like uh, two years or a year before retiring, maybe go into certain programs that uh, prepare you for life after football. Yes, no, definitely. Um, I think, I think. Yes, you know when you're getting older, you know when your body's giving up. You mm -hmm. you may be planning, you planned already, you know what, you're into property or you're into, you're into buying uh, franchises or you're into going into coaching. Um, yeah. All that is all good and well, you know, you, you that, that is planning yourself financially. But I think mm -hmm. the whole mental aspect is is where, is, is for me, is, is what where, where the problem is. You know what, you're coming mm -hmm. from playing sport all the time. Um, to training it, to being passionate about it, and then it's just not there anymore. Yes, you, yeah. you know your focus and you know you're getting older. And I think you're right. I think you're right to a certain degree where um, you, we, we should have maybe sports psychologists come in, you know what? Um, guiding you through that. Um, I think yeah. it, could be, it could be helpful. Yeah. Uh, but Shwaib, with you, man, uh, you've had a very long and interesting career. I just want us to rewind back to where it all started for you. Where, where did the love for football begin for you? Yeah, well, you know, the, the love of football was, 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 was in my family. Uh, all my mother's brothers were, were footballers. Um, mm. uh, one of them was, was fortunate to get an opportunity to go and play professional, but he never took it. Um, so they were all pretty good. And I mean, growing up, going on to soccer fields in Weinberg, Cape Town, um, being there from nine o'clock in the morning to half past mm. five, six o'clock. I was one of the last people to leave. Um, mm. That's how passionate I was, not only about playing, but looking up at my idols. Um, mm. And that is where it all started. Like the, the entry through professional food, football is uh, traditionally through academies or school sport. Where did it start for you? No, I was uh, yeah, I wasn't really fortunate enough to um, to have gone through through academies. Um, I was kind of overlooked at times uh, when I went on trials, you know, to your Santos, to your um, I escaped down Cape Town Spurs at the time. Um, it was it was uh, I was overlooked, so I had to go through the amateur ranks. Um, I played for Bluebells, um, which is a local LFA. Um, played for Milano. And um, got an opportunity to play for Milan in the Vodacom. Um, I was probably about 17 or 18 years old. And um, I think the breaking point for me, where, where I, I thought maybe it wasn't going to happen to become a professional, was um, at the under 23 trials, um, the national under 23 trials. Um, they selected a group coming from, from the Western Cape um, to come to, to Johannesburg for a final, and I never made that group. And mm. it was quite disappointing. 
and heartbreaking. Um, I, I actually, one of my uncles was with me at the trials and I told him not, um, I think I've given up on, on pursuing to become a, a professional footballer. And I actually went on to, to go and work for Nashua as yeah. a photocopier and printer technician. And mm-hmm. I was playing part-time um, in the Vodacom um, for Clyde Pinens. And I did really well the one season and, and got an opportunity to play for Vasco in the first division. And yeah, yeah from there we, we had playoffs and, and, and I obviously caught the eye of Room for Ten Celtics. And that's where the journey yeah. basically started. And you played one season for Vasco, right? Yes, we played one season. I will never forget. I was earning two thousand rand a month, um, <laughs> and I work it out now. I played one season, so it costed the club twenty-four thousand rand, and they sold me for I think it was a quarter million rand. Um, I was I was, <laughs> I was quite upset afterwards because then I realized uh, um, that, that doesn't the doesn't the players get any transfer cost fees? Um, I, I know <laughs> in, in, in Europe, you, you know, to get a percentage of that transfer fee. And unfortunately, yeah. we weren't lucky that time because, well, we we're not lucky because we uh, it falls into the signing on fee. So yeah. you don't get a, a transfer fee because you get paid a signing on fee. Yeah, yeah. And then moving on to to Bluefontein Celtics, uh, who was your first coach there? I think you were there. Were you there under the days of Mr. Avre or Cabozondo? Yes, I was, um, but they came afterwards. I was actually with Tony De and oh, uh, yes. Benjamin Reed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after that, it was Mitch Tavare, the season after that, if I'm not mistaken. But he was only there for six months as a coach. Yeah. And Owen de Gama came, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. And then I think after that, it was Carbo. So, or before yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. How, how, was your, how was your first season uh, in, a, in a professional league, playing in the PSL? I mean, here you are, you, you had, you, at one point you had given up on pursuing a professional football professionally, went to work at Nashua and you got a chance to play for Vasco and then next thing you know, you are in the PSL. How was, how was that switch for you and how was that first season for you as a professional? Look, um, you know what, uh, I was, when, when it comes to taking the risk, I was, I'm a very safety, safety net type of person. So even that opportunity, I'm, I mean, um, you know, we speak in generally. I was, I think my combined income with with Nashua and and playing uh, semi-professional, I think it was about twelve and a half, thirteen thousand, man, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And I got an opportunity to go to to Puma and Celtics and and earn, if I wasn't mistaken, I think it was twenty-two thousand rand a month. Um, <laughs> and I, and I still wasn't convinced of taking that opportunity because I, I was always thinking to myself, so what if football doesn't last? What if I only play for two, three seasons or, or just finish that contract and I don't get another contract? Mm. So I was actually reluctant to, to take the opportunity. Um, and then I got a, you know, I, I went for advice. I spoke to Manip Josephs. Uh, I had a, gave him a call because he was obviously fully professional at the time. Yeah. Um, he was a family friend. And I spoke to a few others and, you know, what they told me, you know, um, it's, it's what you make of it at the end of the day. Mm. And, and, mm. and then I decided, you know, let, let me just take the risk, let me just take this leap, jump, mm. have a little bit of faith. And yeah, yeah I'm actually quite grateful that I, that I did that opportunity. Yeah. How, how would you sum up your, your first season in the, in the professional ranks? How was that for you as a, as a professional? Uh, it, was, it was quite nerve-wracking and it was... It was it wasn't as what I expected. I, I, I only but wish that I had that I had much better training growing up. That I was more prepared because um, you're going into Plymouth and Celtics. At the time, we, we we had the best supporters. We had the most supporters. We had everybody knows the phenomenal supporters. You're going to say Sarah and um, you're playing Sundowns or something, and or even you're playing. Uh, Marisburg United and you're sitting mm. with 12, 13,000 people in the stadium it's filled all the time at that time it was still the old Saisa and it was 15,000 people and they they were busy jumping in the old stadium and shaking so um, it, it was a lot to take in I'm, mm. I, I played 20, 20 league games if I'm not mistaken mm. I, I made some mistakes which was my first season and I got a, and I got hammered you know um, <laughs> playing for, for Blumont and South East in that era um it was it was tough because you you walk past your supporters every time you go to the mall. I mean, there's only two malls in Bluefontein. We all know that. <laughs> so uh, everybody now knows who you are. Everybody's gunning at you. You made the error or you lost. And the first thing they're looking at the goalkeeper. So yeah. um, 
it, uh, it made me grow. It made me grow mentally. It made me ment- mentally strong. Um, mm. it, it made you persevere because you knew mm. you were going into games and your supporters weren't behind you or you could you can't see the penalty and they would mm. say that the keeper could have done better. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it, it was. But I wouldn't exchange it for anything else because I think it, it made me the type of footballer that I was, you know, going mm. forward. Mm. So uh, when when you were there at Celtics, man, like to hear that you played 20 league games in your first season for, for a player who actually wasn't even really sure that he wants to to be pro, and then uh, how, how did things change when um, when you you had uh, post post net pneumonia? I think at a time there at Celtics, and was was it hard to to find yourself in the team uh, with with players like that, like with internationals coming? Because uh, I remember even Patrick Tinier, but then came when you were at Bluefontein Celtics. How was that? Yeah, well, for, okay. First of all, with uh, post-net money, um, you know what? I, I knew what I was getting myself into, and when when I moved, I knew it was Uganda number one. But yeah. I knew that I was going my first year, even second year, was going to be a learning curve. So for me, it was just learning where his strengths was and what and what he was, you know what he was good about uh, and what what made him international and shot stopping was his thing um, i can tell yeah. you now he also had one of the he also had a very good distribution um out of his hands um yeah. similar to kune he also used to do the sidekick so i used to you know i used to steal a lot uh, from all mm. the good goalkeepers that i worked with and that's what i took from him um yeah. i'll never forget it i think we were two one down uh black leopards mm. was our 11th game and he got injured um, at off time, and I had to go in. And I'm like, yeah. okay. And but we were already two one. I think it was two one down or one zero, one zero down. And we mm-hmm. went went to end up winning the game. Um, I had yeah. an assist. I think it was either from a goal kick or it was out of my hands a drop kick. And we won the game two one. And um, going back to um, what you were saying about Patrick name, yeah, you know, um, he came in after the Olympics, which mm-hmm. Tavares said he needed. Uh, obviously, he needed some competition for me. And I said, you know what? Yes, um, I, I agree. We, we we all need to compete, and yeah, you can bring him along. Uh, well, sorry, bring him on board. And uh, we competed. We played. We shared the the games the first half of the season. Mm. Um, and then I think he was going to go to trial on Turkey, and then that didn't materialize, and, and he ended up staying. Mm. And I felt obviously to for an opportunity for me to get into the Bapana squad, I had to play a little bit more regularly. We can't be sharing yeah. games, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously where the Maritzburg, where the Maritzburg deal deal materialized. Yes, and then because uh, when you were at Maritzburg, uh, was it uh, was it in 2010 or 2000? And, it was 2010, right? Well, you, you know, I moved to uh, I went on loan to Maritzburg um, the end of 2009, but oh, I played okay. there obviously for 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 the. For the couple of months, and then I got the call up to Bafana. So I, I started off at, at Maritzburg just before the window ended, uh, just the yeah. last day of the window. I, mm. I will never forget it. I was driving from Bloemfontein. We were playing Amazulu, or we were mm. playing a team in Durban. And I just got a phone call an hour into our drive and said, "Okay, you have to get off in Arisma." And I think this was the Friday because we were playing them the Saturday. Mm. And they told me you have to get off the bus in Arisma, and somebody's going to come pick you up there. They're going to drive you to Johannesburg, and mm. um, you're going to go to the PS office and, and you know uh, sign your your contract for Maritzburg, your loan contract. Mm. So I moved to 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 Maritzburg. I think that was November, December. Um, from yeah, yeah, somewhere along that that line. Do you think uh, having to take that uh, detour to Harry Smith? Do you think well, that was one of your uh, like a life-changing uh, move for you? Yes, no, I think it was. I, 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 if I remember now correctly, my agent and I we were actually pushing for the move. Uh, we were pushing hmm. for a loan move, but obviously for regular game time. But yeah, you know what? It's um, uh, it was it's a blessing in disguise, and um, yes. yeah, the opportunity obviously came. Through luck, obviously, um, making the Bafana, not through luck making the Bafana, but I mean, you work hard to get there, but you work hard to be given an opportunity. And then when the mm. opportunity comes, there's a little bit of luck involved. Because uh, I was, if I look at that time and in that year before the World Cup, we were about six goalkeepers in contention. Um, it was mm. obviously Kune, it was Munib, 
Emil Baron, Rowan Fernandez, and then maybe myself. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think that was probably the goalkeepers, the five goalkeepers. Mm. And Rowan Fernandez had an injury in Germany. Mm. Emil Baron got injured in, in Brazil. And that's where mm. I obviously had to travel to Brazil to join up with the Bafana camp in March 2010. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the move from Blue Van uh, to to Maritzburg, like when I look back at it, I think it was like the, the move that changed things for you. You said uh, there's four things that you wanted out of playing football was to win a league, win a trophy, be nominated for goalkeeper of the season and play for Bafana. And you you won, we'll get to that, but you won the Telcom with City. You, you, you were nominated for goalkeeper of the season at City and you played for Bafana. I mean, three out of four, that's not bad. Yeah, I think you know what each 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 player. Uh, you need to set yourself goals, and and I believe that is uh, what we need to teach every goal, every footballer. Uh, you know, preparing you for the career when you when you start, set yourself goals, set yourself short term goals and long term goals. Um, mm. Be be realistic about it. And uh, for, for me, yeah, you know, um, be getting nominated for two years in a row. One was at Kumalanga Black Aces, and exactly the, uh, well. The, the season after that at City, um, at, you know what, at the age of 34, 35, 34 and 35, um, it also should be, you know, a little bit of motivation to, to, to everybody else that, you know, you, you can decide how long you want to, your career to last and, mm-hmm. and how long um, you want to go into it and how, and when do you want to push? Um, I, I remember Nombeti still pushing at 38 years old. Um, mm. You got yeah, yeah now you got Morgan Gold. So at the end of the day, they 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 inspiration to to players that 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 have this perception um, that 32 or 30 years old it's old, uh, it's not yeah. old. Um, yeah. It's how it's how obviously you want to handle it. Going back yeah. to to the three out of four, yeah. Um, every player wants to win the league, but you also have to realize and 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 know what's your role in you know. I mean, being at Maritzburg, signing a three-year contract and then signing another two years or three years, uh, you had a club that, you know, your, 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 your goal is, is, is top eight, you know? Yeah. Um, that's first and foremost. Mm. And then you take it from there. So, same thing as, as maybe asking um, the old Newcastle uh, uh, to win the league or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. a, a team that's mid-table every year. It's, mm. uh, it's, so, if you had a club or Everton, but if you had a club that, that like for example, Maritzburg, I, I think maybe there I was I was goal driven maybe for a cup, maybe a net yeah. bank. So yes, I think I was maybe hoping for for a cup, um, mm-hmm. but it didn't happen then. And and you know taking the opportunity going to Pumalang Black Aces and, and uh, then obviously making some waves there uh, with getting the nomination. Yeah, if, uh, I want us to to touch on the the Wafana selection in 2010. You were one of uh, 16 uh, locally based players um, that were in the national team for the World Cup. I mean, I remember reading an article, uh, an ESPN article, uh, that uh, said they were surprised that uh, Rowan Fernandez was not picked uh, and uh, an unkept player was picked ahead of him. Uh, and I think because of the profile, and the fact that he was playing in Germany at the time, and that, what did you go through? Uh, like, what went through your mind being an uncapped player, being selected, being part of the last twenty-three? Yeah, you know the. Uh, I'll never forget it. Um, we just arrived. I, I'm not too sure who we played. Uh, we played our last friendly game, and we arrived at um, at the hotel in Johannesburg. But I know we played the game in Polokwane or Pumalanga. Yeah. And we arrived back and, and they said, okay, they're going to announce out of the 30 guys because we still were fine of 30. Mm-hmm. And they were going to announce the uh, the last 23 and I think this was about 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, they obviously just said, okay, we're not going to announce the 23 that made it. We're obviously just going to announce the the seven that hasn't. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sitting there and, I'm, and, and, I, and to be honest, I, I myself, I'm, I'm reading all these articles and and they're saying this, this uh, you know, it's a given. It's Kune Munib, it's Rowan. That's Rowan. it. Uh, all the mm. all, all the articles because everybody says, okay, uh, Rowan is there, it's part of the camp. So those are the three goalkeepers, and this is your midfielders, and this is your defenders, and 
And I'm and, and you know what you you're going on to kick off, you're going on to La Duma and you're reading newspapers and you see this and you say and at the end of the day you start thinking it yourself and and and, and it comes and you telling yourself, okay, I'm I'm packing my bags tonight and I'm going home. And <laughs> Pereira comes and he announces sorry, it was Jairo Lil uh, announces the seven players and and I and I, I think I sat there for about an hour uh, in the conference room and, and they were still packing up and leaving and Pereira asking me why are you still sitting here and uh, and I'm so flabbergasted. I, you know, you, you, you cannot believe it's it still hasn't sunk in. And, and you're sitting there, and I'm the only player still sitting. And it's an hour in after they have announced that everybody's running um, to calling their parents and their loved ones that made the squad and yeah. packing their bags so they could go home the next day for you know a couple of days off. And I'm sitting there, and, and, and I couldn't move. So, <laughs> shock. You think to yourself, you, you, everybody else was telling you you're not going to make it. You're telling yourself you're not going to make it, and and yeah. then you make it. You know, so yeah. um, I think I think you know all credit goes to to Pereira. Um, I think he had a, he had a lot of and his technical team. They they had a lot of uh, balls, if you want to call it, and grit. I, I still haven't asked him why, but <laughs> for, for me it's um, I think we can learn from the from the 2018 World Cup. Um, Germany took Neuer back, and Neuer had a, the worst World Cup he's ever had. Mm. But he came back from injury, and 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 they were so so. Oh, we need him! Oh, we need him! And and such an experienced campaigner had the opportunity to play, and he never had a good World Cup. Mm. So if you look at it in that way, is um, are you going to go with experience, or are you going to experience who's who's still a little bit injured, and what can they offer you? Yeah. Or you're just going to know what I'm going to take and give opportunity to, to obviously an aspiring or a younger, a younger goalkeeper. Um, I don't yeah. know what the, what the situation was. But yeah, it's, um, it, it was tough. It was a, it was a tough time before it, but I think um, yeah, the, the, the end result was went my way at the end of it. Any, any memories or any stories to tell about uh, that Bafana camp in 2010 during the World Cup? Yeah, I think I think uh, the story that I can tell that I I, I will never forget is is um, playing France. Kuhn yeah. is red carded obviously after the Uruguay game. Mm-hmm. Um, Munib goes in and uh, about 70 minutes into the game and he's pulling his hamstring, and and I don't know if he was just trying to work on my nerves. By trying to make me panic because we're playing France, we we up what was a three-two at the time, um, mm. and he's busy pulling hamstrings, and and I, and I, I I I think about it now, and I think he probably was just trying to obviously make get you know get my nerves worked up. Um, that was obviously one of the one of the one of the memories because now you're second choice, you're not you're not anymore the third choice, so if anything yeah. happens, you're going in. Um, you have to warm playing, up. You know you're playing France and France. Yeah. Yeah, but we yeah. saw Zoma be playing against France, and I mean, yes, France had a bad World Cup, and France had a bad maybe 20, 2009. I mean, they were busy mm. obviously with the transformation um, time mm. of the of the squad, and you know, getting out the experience and stuff. So, but now you're still playing all these name, name people, and you're looking at them across, uh, obviously on the other side, Patrice Evra, uh, Loris, and you, you are intimidated. At the end of the mm. day, and, and now you're sitting there, and, and, and Munipa is busy doing his own hamstring injuries. There, we don't know if it was fake or not. Um, <laughs> so, and now you, <laughs> and you now also you're nervous now, okay, but you're also trying to get in the zone, and you're also trying to you know tell yourself if, if the opportunity does come, you know, are you going to approach it? It's a tough game. We obviously we, we were leading at the time. Mm. That's one of them, and then obviously after the game in Bloemfontein at the airport, meeting up with, with the opposition um, was was another yeah. highlight. But I think um, you know just just the the first game, wow, oh, um, it's unbelievable. You're driving from from the hotel in Santon to FNB, and you're just seeing you're seeing um, parks along on the side, and the big screens are up, and and then you realize that all these people are actually watching, and they. They're actually preparing to watch you and and your team that you are part of, you know, mm. and um, that, that's when you realize, and that's when it sinks in, and that's when you you know what you're about. And then uh, no one will forget um, Shabalala's goal. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, us from the bench, it still gives me goosebumps now thinking about the first goal on African soil in a World Cup uh, on mm. the continent. 
that's all the emotions that go through you leading against Mexico uh, the odds wasn't wasn't too good for us playing Mexico I mean they still had uh, Chicharito in the team he came mm. on and I think scored the equalizer if I'm not mistaken no it was Rafael um, Marquez but scored. yeah uh, that's also was it Marquez yeah it was Marquez who scored the equalizer no, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a header. I'm not sure if it was a header or what, but it came from his head piece. But it was. It was Marquez. Yes. Oh, yeah, it was Rafael Marquez. Yeah, scored. So yeah. Scored. But I know. But I know Chicharito came on, and, and in the second half he came on. I was even getting nervous. Yes, so I, <laughs> I was even getting nervous, and, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, yes, Chicharito. Now he's gonna cause havoc. He's gonna, um, you know, and and we were like, okay, let's absorb, let's absorb, and we absorbed and. We, we yeah. got that because if I remember, I think it was a, it was a counter move. Uh, Shabalala's goal was a counter attack. Yes, um, and Post yeah, and then I think you know, so, and 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 one mistake, and I, I think it was the seventy fourth minute or so. Um, no, and fifty. I'm at the clock, and I think oh, wow, well, was fifty. No, sorry, they was, scored in the seventy eighth yeah. minute. Yes, yes. They scored in the seventy eighth minute. The hours was was, was earlier. Mm. On. I'm, I'm yeah. looking at the clock, looking at the clock, and it was 75 minutes. I remember, and I'm thinking, oh, we got 50 more minutes to hold up. And then they scored. I think it was 78 to 81st. I, I, I can't remember that well. But yeah, yeah, I know it was it was very close to, not that close, but it was close to um, to, to obviously the end of the game. And then uh, you you spent most of your of your of your time at Marisburg United, and you you played most of your games that you played in the PSL. You, I mean, you played. Over 250 uh, Premier League matches in the PSL, and most of them were for for Marisberg. Uh, well, uh, did you feel uh, maybe after the World Cup? Maybe did you was there maybe any any other interest from like Jobek teams, or did you have uh, any ambitions of moving to any other team in the league? Yeah, you know what the thing is um, after the World Cup. Obviously, they still had the super sport rights, and there was a lot of money being pumped into South African football. So, mm. you know what? I, I, I was I, I was more of a realist. Yes, you, you know what? When you're growing up, you say to yourself, "Oh, I want to play for Man United," or "Oh, I want to play for uh, Barcelona." Um, but I was a realist because at that time I was 28 years old, 2010, and and I thought to myself, if there was any interest, it would probably be. If in Europe, it would probably be one of the. I think there was interest in Belgium, Sweden, mm. one of the Scandinavian countries. Mm. But you, you, you could then earn the same money in South Africa than what you earn there. And yeah. being 28, 29 years old, um, if I looked at it, then even if I had done well at those clubs, uh, at 32, you're moving to a better club than then. So when I was looking at my age and I look at where I want to go, I thought it was, it's probably best to, to you know to sit here and uh, sit in South Africa and play here. Um, yeah. Why I didn't go to to bigger clubs? It wasn't a lack of, um, of interest, confidence in myself, and saying that oh. I'm yeah, or, or I'm gonna go and co- compete with a club as Pirates or Chiefs. I, I for me was like you were saying now, uh, 200 more than 250 PSL games I played. That for mm. me is a success story on its own. It is. When I look now, and and somebody like and 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 somebody like like Riyad um, Peterson, and then I mm. say he's been in the PSL for, for six seven years, but he hasn't played a hundred games. And I look at the clubs that he's been at, and that could have been me as well. So I would rather say, you know what? I would rather want to play regularly, compete. Yes, mm. you you know you don't know what's going to happen before you go to the club. Like he maybe thought, okay, let me sign from. From Chiefs or Super Sport to Sundowns, I'm going to break into the team and play. Yes, you can, but you'd also maybe rather think to yourself, why not be playing regularly and 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 having a, a greater chance of playing regularly at a hmm. Arrows or Amazulu or even Maritzburg and still making a name for yourself and and still hmm. being part of a team and still being part of objectives and still being part of goals. Whereas hmm. having all that talent and Sitting now three, four years, and you should have been part of the national team setup, but you can't be part of it because you're not playing. Um, mm. So that was the way that I looked at it um, after the 2010 World Cup. Do I want to go to Sundowns, Chiefs, and you're going to fight for a position and you could potentially get the opportunity? But I mean, mm. uh, the, the chances, and I look at it risk factor wise. Um, here I'm at a place where it's me, I'm competing with one, 
where I'm going to go to sign for a Sundowns or Chiefs and you're competing with three, four others. That, 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 was, that was how, how I decided, you know what, let me, let me commit my, my, my good years to a team like Maritzburg because as much as there's always, you always will hear stories about a club like that, maybe um, the owners or this one's get involved, that one get involved or this or that, you, um, they, they also had goals and they had objectives and they, they're actually a club for, for the city and for that, pro- for, for that city and for the province. But the, mm. the owners are dedicated to the club. They, they, you know, they, they are passionate about the club. They're passionate about the city. And yeah. for me, was the, that's all that I wanted. And all I wanted to hear from, from owners. Mm. And then how, how did the move uh, to Kumalanga Black Aces come about? Well, I had an, um, I'll never forget it. I, 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 uh, I had an option here and after, after our Maritzburg Awards, um, they told me we want to extend, I'm sorry, we want to exercise the option here, but we want mm-hmm. you to take a salary cut. So I said, okay, not, I'm not prepared to do that. Um, you obviously have up until, I think it was the 31st of May. Mm. Um, to exercise it with that and then the whole the two weeks obviously after the, I think the season ended mid, mid May we had our year in function on the day and that two weeks we were in we were back and forth back and forth I was already in Cape Town um, but in the meantime we were I was already in contact with a few other clubs and um, on the 31st of May um, I called again and I, and I spoke to um, to the to the COO at the time um, Mr. Kadaudia's son and uh, Farouk's son and um, I told him and then uh, the offer came through from from the Morph brothers and they said okay we needed to fly up to Johannesburg and just before I, I, I left Cape Town to fly to Johannesburg I, I called um, the Kadodia son again and, and I told him you know what I'm, I'm going I'm going to and he says no we want you to stay we want to exercise but I said I'm not prepared to and came and I signed the contract obviously with, uh, with the Malanga Black Aces. Hmm. And then how, how would you how would you sum up your days uh, uh, back when you were still at Bumalanga uh, Black Aces when you when you went there and you started there how would you sum up your days there? Uh, it was the best season of my career for me. Hmm. Um, that season and the following season at Cape Town City it was probably my two best seasons I've ever played. Hmm. Um, I um, I worked with Mushkin Etugal and um, you're a 34 year old man and he's shouting at you like you're a 14 year old boy <laughs> and you you know you have to suck it up. He's, yeah. uh, I I can remember at the time I I told my partner every day that I, I just want to retire and I'm done with football. I mean I'm having <laughs> Mushkin Etugal. You could ne- you could literally do nothing, nothing right. You'd be on your case. He was on my case every single day, like I'm a 14-year-old boy that is busy grooming to become a professional. Um, you, you're sitting, you're one of the most experienced players in, in the camp, and he's shouting at you like you're a small boy now. I know a lot of people would take it personally, and I know a lot of other players did probably take it personally, but he, he, at the end of the season, I could tell him, you know what? From what you did at the beginning, now I'm a nominee for goalkeeping offices. Yeah. But that's all he, that's all that he wants out. But I, I'm, mm. I'm um, proof that when he's at your case like that, then I, I mean, I promise I could never do anything right. Um, and mm. I wanted to retire. I think just before the August um, cutoff, he, yeah. um, Marisburg wanted me to come back on loan. Yeah. And and I was actually considering it, and I was thinking, must I, hey, must I just rather you know just cut this crap, just leave the cycle, man, and and go back to Marisburg because because they were having troubles now also because they um, I think yeah there was a few mistakes from the goalkeeper at the time um, in the in the MT and eight, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, and I was thinking, hey, don't you want to consider come back, and and I'm sitting here and then I'm, and my partner's telling me, you know what, no, not push through with this, and I wasn't <laughs> even playing. Now I'm sitting, yeah. I'm, I'm getting so much slack from Mushin Etrigal 
I'm third choice because Jackson is first choice, Jackson Mabuquan is first choice, Bafana and Flapo second choice. We we go to to our first uh, games to to Nelspreet and uh, we're playing the Friday night, we're playing Super Sport and the Tuesday we play um, Sundown. Mm. And we arrived the Saturday and I'm and I'm not even in the team sheet. Now I'm like, oh, you know, this Maritzburg call is, doesn't sound like a bad idea. And and I'm obviously upset. You know, I've worked hard during pre-season and I'm not even in the team. I'm thinking myself, what what did you get into your own? And the Tuesday we play Sundowns and then I get called to be, be on the bench for, for the Sundowns game. And that's where Jackson got the red card. And we beat Sundowns 1-0. Um, mm. And we played with 10 men for the whole of the second half. And yeah, yeah that's that's obviously how the journey started with, with Puma Langa Black Aces. Yeah, and I remember you even challenged for the title that season. Yes, we, you know, uh, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a hard pill to swallow because there were games that we just thought we were going to win and we just didn't play according to the game plan. And, mm. but at the end of the day, for me, it was a really successful season because coming into a squad where, where Mushin got rid of maybe 15 players, if I'm not mistaken, I think we only had about 10 players right at the beginning, the 10 of, of the players of the season before. Yeah. And he got rid of all these big name players. And, and I'm sure even now the the, the, the Morfeo brothers will, will tell you that they must have even thought to themselves, well, what are we getting ourselves into? And it just kept um, Collins and Basuma, Kuboni, we had Mzava and we had, uh, who was the centre back, the captain? Um, can't get to him now. And those were the only experienced players that he had. And, and obviously, Jackson Mabuhani in goals. And uh, everybody was thinking, uh, how's he going to bowl the team? And, and then he brought in Aubrey Motiba, Tabo Nodada, um, Paul Matsi started playing regularly. Um, mm. and, and that's obviously how he knew what he was doing then. And for me, it was a successful season. Yeah. And then uh, moving to moving to Cape Town City, I mean, you guys, uh, when the team, uh, in the first season that you guys took off, Cape Town was buzzing, the league was buzzing because uh, it was, there was this new exciting team. Um, Eric Tinkler as a coach, he had to prove himself because at Pirates, things didn't go as well as he maybe would have liked them to. And then he goes to Cape Town City, and then you guys just shake up the league. Yeah, you know what? We, uh, it was, like I said, it was probably from what, um, from the foundation that, that Mushin said. Mm. Um, I've read a few articles where it says it takes about six, six months for a certain philosophy to come out of a team. Um, especially mm. if you work with the team for so long. So mm. a combination of Eric Tinkler's coaching and a little bit of um, of dynamics of what Mushin had brought in. Because if you look at it, uh, we Aubrey Ngoma, uh, Lebo Khang Maniyama, you know, those were all, um, all the, one, you know, the, the core of the key players that was at Aces. So, so yeah. you, you have those ones. And I mean, those, those two were electrifying together. Um, mm. That was probably the best combination. Aubrey had the most assists in that season. Lebo mm. got play of the season, that season, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then obviously we brought in some, some good players. Uh, Brought in Robin Johannes in, in, in the back to replace Mzava. Um, mm. And then Aubrey, Aubrey Motiba left to, to, Super, to Sport. Super Sport early, early in that season. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, um, yeah, we, we, we still had we still had the philosophy of Bushin Etrigal, and then you had the, the the added value of Eric Tinker coming in. And yeah, that's what I think was and we were playing some good football. Um, mm. We had a lot of counter attack transition football at that in that year, but it worked for us at the end of the day. Yeah, and then uh, Shwaib, from starting from not being sure if you want to be a professional, like I, I just mentioned now that at the beginning you mentioned the fact that you you were overlooked, and then that season you you get nominated for goalkeeper of this of the year. You win the Telkom Nogot in December in Pulugwan against Supersport. I mean. Uh, did that feel like vindication and as to being the guy that was overlooked and you found your way through uh, amateur level football? Going into the 2010 World Cup, uh, it was said that Rowan Fernandez or either Emil Baron would be the third choice after Munib and Ithimil Kuna, who was the number one. And then you make it through. Uh, and then here you are 
nominated for goalkeeper of the year. You just won yourself a, a league cup with Cape Town City. Did that feel like the vindication that you needed for yourself to say, you know what, uh, it, th- this wasn't a bad choice after all. Uh, choosing between working at Nashua and making it professional wasn't a bad choice. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, I think le- I think what you've learned along along the years, what I've learned. I mean, even if you look at, um, I don't know if you even recall 2017. I think it was March. I, st- I still got a call up to to the Papana squad. I mean, I was yes. 36 years old. Mm. Uh, um, so you, you look at those type of things, and, and then you, you you think to yourself, yes, it, it is. I mean, I took took. 13, 14 years, it took yeah, 12, 13 years to get my first trophy, um, get another call up, so at, uh, get a nominee. At the end of the day, like people must understand, is this there's so many there's so many routes to get to a destination, and, and not everybody's mm-hmm. route is going to be the same. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to get to a certain point, there's, there's four or five different routes. Some are straight, but some takes a very long, you know, detour. And mm. I, I think that is what what any sportsman or any footballer should know is that. Um, and I tell my I tell my young my young goalkeepers that as well. You know what? It's, it's not just one way to get into it. Like a lot of my a lot of my goalkeepers now, um, they they talking about uh, 12, 13 years old. Oh, I want to play for for, for the Kaiser Chiefs or Orlando Pirates development. But if you look at it statistically, um, who besides Kune came from from? Sundowns under 12, under 13, and still play professional, you know, or, or Chiefs. Mm. Which of mm. those play, or not players, maybe goalkeepers? Because I only look at most of the time, I look at the goalkeepers. So I mm. always tell them also, you know what, if you want to go and play there, like I had a goalkeeper, he was at Orlando Pirates uh, under 14, he's still one mm. of my goalkeepers. And then he tells me, hey, coach, hey, um, what do you think? Must I go to track Chiefs or yes, uh, this, um, this company that's taking players overseas? Um, to 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 you know to go and trial there or go and play uh, and and I'll tell him you know there's different ways you can even go and play amateur football but mm. maybe it's because of the way the, the way that my route has been through amateur mm. football and then semi professional and then professional that was mm. my route others go yeah. straight from amateur into into professional others go through the youth academies so everybody mm. has their roots and and for me it's, sometimes it takes longer i mean mine mine took longer to get trophies to get a nominee and uh, everybody should yeah you should know that that uh, each each route is different yeah uh i think uh be, before because now you're touching on the academy stuff and i'd like us to get into that but before that like i just wanted to find out from you um uh, uh, wait, did you feel hard done at CT that you had uh, been nominated for goalkeeper of the season like twice in a row? Once the the, the, the last season of, or at Mpumalanga Black Aces, and then in CT's first season, uh, you, you you were nominated for goalkeeper of the season. Were you? Did you feel hard? Did you feel hard done by the fact that Sage Stevens just uh, played ahead of you even after you just had the season that you had? No, well, you know, the, the season, the first season, obviously, with Benny. Mm. Um, I played in the MTN 8. Um, we got all the way to the final. Um, mm. And then I think it was before the final, I, I, it was a league game. I made, I made one big mistake late. I think it was an 82nd or 83rd minute against the Lando Pirates. And mm. it costed us the game. Um, it was 0 0. And I was supposed to go out and catch the ball, and I left it, thought it was going to go out for for a goal kick and um, one of the players came and he just slid it back in and it rolled over and it was a, it was a costly mistake and you know um, you as a goalkeeper you need to know that when you make errors 99% of the time it does result in goals mm-hmm. um, Sage was obviously came in and he was doing well and at the end of this all I could do was obviously just push uh, push him from and give him the guidance, but push mm. uh, positively and compete, you know, yeah. positively with him. Yeah. And that was basically the role that maybe I thought that that was it, it was gonna it was leading towards. You know, this is the role that you're going to be playing for the season. Mm. And I was I was okay with it. Um, you know, at the end of the days, you you know that you you can't always play forever. And I mean, at yeah. 37, 
getting a, a nominee for goalkeeper goalkeeper of the season was 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 good enough for me. Sorry, at 36 years old was good enough for me. Mm-hmm. And you have to support the team at the end of the day, and you have to support the coach and whichever decision he makes with mm-hmm. when it comes to playing, uh, who's playing. Yeah. Was it was it a hard decision to make? Uh, uh, to move from City to uh, Ajax Cape Town, who were playing, especially in the NFD. Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, John Kometa spoke to me and he said, you know what, uh, we would like you to come on board as a coach, as a goalkeeper mm. coach. Mm. And uh, I felt that I wasn't yet ready to, to, to give up the plane because mm-hmm. I've always said that, that I'm, going to, I'm going to retire when, when I'm no longer passionate about playing. And I felt that I still, I still had a little bit in me to, to play and yeah. um, to compete. And I, and I thought maybe I, I would wanted a, a role where it would phase me out, where maybe a third choice goalkeeper, but also the goalkeeper coach, you know? So you're still okay, part okay. of the playing. Mm-hmm. And um, they, they weren't looking for something like that. They were looking for, you retire now and you go straight into coaching. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, they wanted me to be to be in charge of all the goalkeepers. So basically, you're looking at the the, the the senior side, the MDC side, and you have to help out um, in the Castle League and and the SAB League or whatever clubs, or whatever um, league teams they still had, the junior teams. Mm. So I, I felt that there wasn't going to be any growth in in my goalkeeping academy. All that, I, all that I want for, for professional footballers or even just professional athletes is that um, for them to be people to prepare them for 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 what they what they what their lives are about and what their lives are going to be about um, when they make it professional. The pressures that you have, the different types from your family to the soccer field, to your to your friends, to your circle of friends. To all those things is um, because you, nobody prepares you for that. Nobody prepares you for this is what is going to happen. Or, because when, when when you're looking from the outside uh, as a as an aspiring athlete, you look in and then what do you see? You just see glamour and you just see and then you say, oh, I want to be in that circle. I want to be in that bubble. Mm. Um, you'll see a, a, a player with a fancy car, a player with a fancy house. Um, that's what you see. So, uh, oh, I want to get into that, but nobody actually prepares you for all the other things. That, and that is what I feel that uh, um, what we lack, we, and we need to, we need to um, uplift, uplift our, our our aspiring athletes for 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 certain for certain things that happens in your career and preparing you for it. Just making yeah. you ready that you know when you are when you do come across these type of things that you that you have a, a, a an idea of, of what choice to make. Mm. And, and 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 it's it's for me it's I know there's not a lot of content around now in the football scene because now all I'm seeing is is is, is uh, on on the websites and and on the soccer websites and newspapers is this player and his swag ride or this player and his swag <laughs> house or this player and his <laughs> and his wag and this player and, and it, it, it sometimes feels like it's false advertising you know yeah. It's, it's, Advertising falsely. Yes, they 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 allowed to have these things, but 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 speak a little bit more about in-depth things, um, or speak a little bit more about other things, or how do you when you go to training and 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 you were the the reason the team lost over the weekend. How did you adjust, or what did you do in this situation? Or who's your mm-hmm. favorite teammate? Um, you know, why is he your favorite teammate? Who's your best friend on the field? You know? Who's the you know those that, that type of you know, and and give people of insight of what it is about in the dressing room you know how's mm. how's coach Kevin Hunt in the in the uh, when you're losing one zero how's how's Mushin shouting in, uh, when you lost the game because I can tell you now Mushin Etrugal you can lose the game now against a good team and we driving we're playing for Puma Langa Black Aces and we drive from now spread immediately after the game. So immediately <laughs> after the game, you're on a four-hour bus to Johannesburg and Mushin t- doesn't stop. And you will sit quietly for half an hour and then you just hear him shout at something and nobody knows what it is. You can speak to Calvin Marlin. You know, <laughs> and then he scream at Calvin Marlin. Calvin Marlin didn't do anything. He's just sitting next to him. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, um, w- like the, the one content I did like and I did enjoy uh, reading on, on kickoff from, uh, is, is, is Moleko from Chiefs, you know, doing yes. farming. Brilliant! Mm. I love it. I love it. Mm. 
and uh, and you know and, and you know he was at at, at Bloemfontein Celtics as a striker. He played at Young Tigers, if I'm not mistaken, as a striker. We brought oh, him. Is it? Yeah, he was a he was a junior um, at that time there. Uh, but I think he played for Young Tigers, but he was a striker. He played for the Vodacom team. Hmm. And and you know that that's brilliant because yeah. he enjoys farming and he's showing people that he's enjoying farming. No, yeah. with others. It doesn't so, always have to be glamorous. Exactly. Or, or why can't hmm. we speak to um, Shabalala and and, and, and yeah, yeah, bring them together and ask him how did you guys form Shay Lounge? You know, yeah. teach the other yeah. youngsters how did you form it? You know, how did it come about that you wanted a, 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 a yeah, it's a club or whatever, but to help the others, maybe they were, they, maybe they have an idea. Yeah. Or mm. speak to Morgan Gold and ask him how did this uh, passion come for your your caps and your and your hoodies, MG clothing? How did it come? Yeah. So they can yeah. find their passion. We get help them get good investors. You know, those are the things that we want to we, we, we want to see now, or especially at this time when, when there's not much football content. Yeah. So is is that what got you into? Is that what got you into uh, starting your own coach uh, goalkeeper academy? Yeah, you know, um, I was still playing at, at City in 2016 when I started the goalkeeping academy. Um, mm. I worked with a, with a school, Randebosch Boys High School, um, mm. and then I started using the facilities. But you you could see it was already a, a, it was a bit of a downward uh, spiral when it comes to, to to our goalkeeping because every time we're playing qualifiers and uh, Itumilin Kun is not available, then it's like panic around the whole of South Africa. You know, mm. and yes, we have a reliability in, in Darren Keat and Ronan Williams, but who's next? What's after mm. that? You know, mm. who, who? Um, we had Brandon Peterson, he, he had a, a massive injury, um, actually, a career threatening injury uh, a few years back, so that set him back. Um, mm. where's Jody February? Uh, he, he, he signed, at, if I'm not mistaken, for Sundowns and is now on loan at Cape Moyo. So I'm hoping mm. that he could break through if he does go back to Sun. If he goes to Sundowns next season, I hope that he can break through and get a little bit of game time. Yeah. And um, But other than that, then, you know, yeah. who's next? We got, um, you have uh, Pule at Supersport. It's called mm. up for the, for the Kosafa team. In, you know, Audi plays for Supersport. Um, mm. You have Riyad Peterson also that's been bouncing around playing second fiddle, third choice at the big club. So, uh, where's our next 20 year old? And and I look at AC Milan's goalkeeper, you know, 20 year old, 21 years old now, Donna Ruma. And uh, mm. he was uh, five years five years ago making his debut at 16 years old. Where, where's our 16 year old going to make his debut? Mm. You understand in the PSL. Why is yeah. our PSL clubs not? Not not taking local goalkeepers. Why are they always looking at foreign goalkeepers? It's getting so bad now that we we sitting with um, three Dutch goalkeepers, two in the PSL, one in the one in the NFD, one is at Ajax, the one at Stel- Stellenbosch. I, I think he left, um, and then we have a, a, a French goalkeeper at, at Orlando Pirates. Mm. So each season we're just seeing more and more foreign goalkeepers and. We're not saying that they're not good enough, but we also understand where the clubs are coming from is because we don't have resources here. We don't have our goalkeepers here. And, and that's where the academy basically we had thought. Let me let me try and get the fundamentals of goalkeeping into our young goalkeepers. Yes. Where we could potentially see the next Ronwin Williams and Itumel and Kuni. And why I use Ronwin is because in 2011, Supersport said, you know what, I'm going to invest in my youngster. Yeah. I'm going to allow you, I'm going to allow you to make mistakes, but you're making mistakes because you haven't played much. You're not going to be making technical errors. Yeah. So, and I understand from PSL class because you wouldn't want a goalkeeper to make a, a technical error and in the next game, he makes a concentration error. So now I'm sitting with a, a goalkeeper, 21, 22. He's costing me points for technical errors and concentration errors because he's young. He's going to make concentration errors. Imagine you're a young 18-year-old and, and you're going to play Kaiser Chiefs um, at FNB and there's 30,000 people. You're going to feel a little bit nervous and you haven't been in the situation before. So you're going to make errors. That is understandable. Yeah. But now the next week comes and then you 
come and, 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 and the ball comes straight to you and goes to your legs. So now you're costing mm. me points and that is where clubs are looking at. That's why clubs are saying, you know what, we're going to invest rather in, in European goalkeepers and or maybe foreign goalkeepers, but why, more importantly, I look at it and I ask, why European goalkeepers is because they technically sound. Because they, mm. they know already from 10, 11, 12 years old, they are, are groomed the basics. Our youngsters are not. Yeah. They have the attributes and the characters to be good goalkeepers and great goalkeepers. But they, 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 they don't have that four years of between 14 and 18 where they are groomed. This is un, and to understand the position. Yeah. And that is with the market that I want to tap into as in where we are lacking. And that is, I want to groom you between the ages of 12, for example, and 18. And yeah. when you're 18 year old, you can sign for, for a PSL club and play. Yeah. So uh, I think it's actually commendable that you, you are providing a platform for young kids uh, to start, uh, have a better start or a better foundation than you had for them to start where you couldn't start. Uh, so w when you're looking at it, uh, you started it in, in 2016 when you were still at City and uh, it's, it's, it's been four years now. Uh, how far is it like in terms of like uh, the goalkeepers that you've already brought up from your academy? Maybe they're like you're looking into having them into like MDC teams or having them into like signing for PSL teams or NFB teams. You know, but you see that, that, that that's what I'm saying is, um, okay, before I answer that question, I'm going to go back mm. and, and I, you, 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 hit the nail, you hit the nail on the head is where you're saying it's because mm. my lack of my lack of goalkeeper training in Magaka because yeah. if you look at what I've achieved and that was the 10, year, the, the 10 years, if I say from 2007 till 2017, mm. Mm. those 10 years of playing regularly, now imagine that was 10 years before. So basically if I had mm. had all that training because there was times that I was training with uh, in, the, in the World Cup squad and, and, and Itumel and Kunen when he was doing things that I couldn't do. I'm thinking myself, mm. what, why? Uh, and yeah. then I could grasp it and I could learn from it. and but I'm thinking, if I had the training from 13 years old, and then I promise you would have been, you would have been, would have been a different telling, story. Would have been speaking a whole different story, because if you yeah. look at the, the the attributes that I had and the characteristic, I, I should have been playing in Europe. I was mm. 189 meters. I was mm -hmm. weighing 85 kilos. You meeting mm -hmm. all those? Now imagine the, the imagine the training that, that I could have had. It's definitely uh, the, the sky's the limit. Yeah. So I want to give the opportunities for kids like that. And going mm. back to, to, to signing for PSL clubs, I want to see more, more clubs, you know, putting in and saying, you know what, we're going to give you the opportunity that Supersport gave Ron. And he's a perfect example because everybody knows about it now. Yes. Kuni, that, that happened in 2005 or six. where Kuni was also a 16, 17 year old making his debut. But Ron yes. is obviously the more recent one. So we want to yeah. use that. So why can't we have more 18 year olds playing? Given an opportunity, True. 19 years old, and and it's only because clubs will see the potential. Like for example, now look, um, Darren Darren Johnson does well. Uh, Ajax second choice. He does well in mm -hmm. the in the um, qualifiers, mm -hmm. the Olympics. Yes, he, 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 he does well, but he hasn't played a single game at his club. But he doesn't play for mm -hmm. his club, so uh, you know it doesn't work hand in hand. Mm, and that, mm. that is something that we, we obviously have to look and try and change. Yeah, to, to find that, but to strike that balance between players playing well for the junior national teams, but also having time to play week in, week out, week in, week in, in week in out at their clubs. Yes, um, I, I, I think, to, you know, to a certain degree, you, 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 you know that there's a lot of money being, being, being placed in football, especially with the clubs. Yes. But if you look at, um, if you look at the cricket um, and the, and yeah, the cricket domestic league is not good, but we're still developing great cricketers and a great national team. Like for example, we are want to add to that is you have somebody like like Riyad Peter so that uh, um, you know I will use him as an example because he's got the potential to make the national team. So for me, is you have him sitting at sundowns in the in the stands. Why not then work around and say okay, let's Let's send him out to Chippa United and go and play for a season. He's playing regularly. Mm. He's got an opportunity to make the national team. If he does really well, you bring him back. You understand? Mm. So yeah. it works hand in hand for both the club and the player. 
So the player mm. gets exposure to play week in and week out. He gets an opportunity to make the national team. It strengthens, strengthens our national team uh, opportunities for goalkeepers. And also, for you as the club, you're giving an opportunity to play. Same thing yeah. with Bavuma. Same mm. thing with um, with Puglia at Supersport. If you feel they yeah. have the potential, speak to other clubs and say, you know what, take them for a six-month loan, let them play. It helps you as the club, it helps them as the club, and it mm. helps you as your nation at the end of yeah. the day. So, it's, it's a win-win in all departments. And yeah. that's the thing that I think we also need to, need, need to start looking at. In the mm. NFD, I think we should give more youngsters an opportunity. Mm, true. Uh, so, well, what, what would you say are like your short-term and long-term goals for uh, academy? I mean, yeah. Well, you know, the, at the moment now is just to to, to grow awareness. Um, we we we're working a lot on on trying to get funding because you see, get can Sunny uh, um, be, again because of my my. My, my motive and all my ideas will always come of what, what I've experienced. So mm. I, I go to um, a, a, a Western province trials at, at under 19 and I'm 17 years old and I'm sitting at home uh, and I, I forgot, well, couldn't, you can't even ask your parents for, for taxi fee. So now mm. You, I have to go and change. I don't know if you remember. I don't know how old you are, but you know, in our day, we used to sell these these five hundred ml glass bottles. We used to yeah. trade them in and used to get money for them. Yeah, and I used to I used do to that as well. The shop. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that's my taxi fee. So I used yeah. to go from Cape Town. I used to take from Grassy Park to a taxi to a Nova Park, and mm. you know, and everybody knows a Nova Park is just. And then there you have to change and you take a bus to to uh, Bell Arc. Mm. So, and then you have to walk another two kilometers. And while I'm walking those two kilometers, I have the Lenik bus. You know, the, the old Lenik. Their bus yeah, comes Lenik, and yeah. their, their whole team is coming to the under 19 trials. So, you know, the old, the old team, the old 12, 13 players is going to the, And they give me a lift. And yeah. I get in, and, and but that is where I. So, my motive is what I want to get at is I want to go into the townships. And I want to go and identify the talent. Yeah. So that is where we will be looking at trying to source funding. So mm-hmm. I want to go into uh, Alexandra or Tembisa or like I had one that we were going to do. Uh, it was obviously postponed now because of the lockdown. I had one um, at Eden Park uh, for for Katlaong and Tokozo area. So I want yeah. you to send your goalkeepers. Let me identify, see potential. And then in, in and then bring them into my academy, but mm-hmm. obviously you know we 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 obviously trying to source funding now and you know looking at because it, it, it is quite an expense. You want to go out there for for a whole weekend and give training drills, and you have to bring in some more coaches. And because I mean I'm looking at about 30, 30 players, and yeah, we we hope that we, we will be able to. So that's the short term goal, is obviously to secure yeah. some funding. For that part yeah. of it, and then we yeah. do have um, lessons that I give to aspiring goalkeepers that can afford it. Um, yeah. So there is paying clients that um, obviously keeps the academy running, but going out and sourcing, and we want to give kids opportunities that that, that are a little bit dis- disadvantaged, um, and and they don't have the opportunities, and that's what I want to do. And I want to go mm. and find the next raw talent. I want to go and find the next uh, Itumelin Kuni. I mean, Itumelin Kuni will tell you also slip slip. The, the bus stop. Uh, yeah. Also had to do the traveling, but we want to go out and source it. Yeah. So you want to plug that gap in terms of uh, getting those kids to put them in better positions to be seen as to what they could do in the future. Yes. You, you see. Yeah. Um, we 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 want to we want to try and make it a, a level playing field for everybody. And I feel yeah. that we have so much we have so much talent and so much, but we're just not in in, 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 in investing it or investing in opportunities of, of, of looking out for them. And that yeah. for me is is like you're saying we want to plug the gap, but we also want to look at um, at, at evening the, the playing field. For example, we. Uh, I don't know if you if you've seen this video where um, it's an it's an American video we the the guy offers all these students a hundred dollars for for the winner whoever wins the running race but be, before before he blows the whistle for the race 
you ask them each question so you all ask um okay who who didn't have taxi fare to even get there take two steps back or mm. if you did have take two steps forward so at the mm. end of his five ten questions you had like three or four people right in front and like three or four and I've, uh, almost a hundred is all at the back but he says yeah. obviously the ones in front are going to win because they've got a head start so yes. in a nutshell is that is what we want to achieve we want to give everybody a fair an opportunity um uh, on on reaching your goals and no one to be the disadvantaged or classed as that and that is why i'm yeah. saying um, we also with the academy is also trying to try and find maybe and look at a partnership even with safa where we could um help them with goalkeepers in the junior ranks um and i'm not only talking about guys and we're talking about boys and girls, girls. Well. Um, yes. we want to give that opportunity we want to even going into the into the disadvantaged areas i'm even looking at at um using goalkeeper training as an opportunity for 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 females as just to be active maybe yeah. you you coming out of um, a, a violent home or you coming out of, and you want to find a different avenue and that is mm. what we Uh, what the, what the foundation and the academy is, is 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 what that part is about and then like i said we also have um our paying clients which uh, feel that the kid um the parents will feel that the kids do have potential you can also contact us and we can obviously take you th- through that um the way we train those goalkeepers as well and try to prepare them um if they want to become professional goalkeepers or if they just want to improve generally as goalkeepers for the clubs Oh, okay. So, how do people contact you? Like, in terms of maybe to join the academy, or maybe if there's someone out there who wants to be part of the academy as a funder, or in whichever way they can come in contact with uh, the academy. How do people get into in contact with you? Yeah, well, the, um, we obviously have our Facebook page, the Shoei Bottas Goalkeeping Academy, on Instagram as well, and on Twitter. Um, yeah. On Twitter, it's uh, Academy. is Walters and then um obviously the Shoei Walters Goalkeeping Academy um on 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 Facebook and then Instagram as well. So okay. yeah if there's anybody obviously can and I mean you 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 know that we we have to be realistic now and the, obviously the the economy has taken a knock now and you know there's not yeah. going to be a lot of a lot of CSI fundings and um you know a lot of companies pushing to 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 fund now at the moment. But I mean yeah. we're not We're not only looking at, we're not only looking at 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 companies and, and saying, you know what, we want we want half a million rand, for example, for 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 50 kids for the year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if you have smaller businesses that would say, you know what, Ray, um, if you have a good goalkeeper and you feel he has potential and he needs a year, you know, this is, you know, we can work out or we'll work it out and say, okay, this is what we look at. Um, providing the kid for the whole year and this is what it will cost it will be obviously a lot less so it's not only saying hey we want to go to for example you want to go and look at net bank or apps and say you know give me millions of rands no yeah. you just want to say okay we have one child he's got the potential you can have a look at him we want to help you to him uh, we want to help train him obviously help him with, with school because we do believe academics is also Uh, very important so we you know all around and you know this yeah. is, I was not saying oh we you know what we're just looking for funding for for, for for a whole lot of money and stuff like that yeah uh, Trey thank you so much man uh, thank you so much for, for chatting to us and thank you for the opportunity obviously um, sure. for, for having me here and to, to, to raise raise certain concerns and give you a little bit of uh, you know uh, joy mm-hmm. of the of the 20 to take us back to, to the 2010 World Cup Um, yeah. yeah. Just thank you for the opportunity, and yeah, everybody must just stay safe. And if they, if you know any any goalkeeper or any parent uh, has any questions, they can just they can just contact us on uh, on the social media. Thank you so much, man. It, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to to host you, and it's also an honor as well to have you uh, on the platform. Yes, no, definitely. I'm hoping in the, I'm hoping in the next year or two we can have a I will have my my my, my goalkeeper maybe signing for for one of the big clubs or maybe even making the national junior national team. I'm gonna have him on board and then we'll have an interview together. We'll definitely do that. We'll definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you, thank you, okay, thank you so cool. much. I'll see you, Kentani. Thanks, brother.